Hello again. We're doing another video here. My name's Rob Clark from Clark's Custom Flies. And today we're going to tie the pattern for you called the Amherst Spay. Um, this pattern was developed by Marc LeBlanc out of Quebec in uh, the mid to late 80s. Um, I've tied it in a particular pattern and a particular color um, set up for Southern Ontario steelhead. Um, Mark tied this for the West Coast for steelhead, but we've I've been continuing to use it here in Southern Ontario in a multitude of different colors. Um, it's a great pattern to fish. Swinging flies, you can tie it in colors for stained water, you can tie it in colors for clear water, you can even tie it in smaller sizes and larger sizes. Um, great adaptable pattern, great spay pattern, tons of movement. And I uh, hope you enjoy this pattern today. Let's get started. The hook I'm going to use is the Daiichi 2051 Alec Jackson hook. Um, great mid-range wire hook. Um, not a light hook, not a real heavy hook. Um, great steelhead hook. It's very, very popular with most steelhead anglers here in Ontario and the U.S. now. Um, comes actually in three or four different colors if you like it in a variety of sizes. I generally tie this pattern in the 1.5 size, uh, a little bit larger than, than most. Um, I find a 1.5 size uh, gives me a good flow rate. It has a, a great look to it in this size and it's not oversized. Um, a lot of people tend to fish the steelhead patterns here in Southern Ontario and upstate New York and that a little on the small side. Um, I like them a little bit larger, especially when you're swinging flies and you're looking for much more aggressive fish. Give them something to look at. So we're going to start our thread the way I always start my thread, which is halfway point on the return eye. So the return eye is here and I tie it in halfway. It allows me good distance from the eye of the hook so I know where the put all my collars and stuff and allows me an opportunity to push down and that return eye and lock it into place. I tend to use a little bit longer tag when I tie my flies and hold it on an angle in order to allow nice tight wraps side by side. The thread will flow down very well and I'm going to bring this all the way down to just past the hook point. The thread I'm using today by the way too is UTC 70 denier in black. It's a thread that I use quite often, quite commonly. Um, I've replaced most of my standard threads with this particular thread because of its durability and flexibility of types of ties to do. So what I've done is we're going to put a tag on this fly. So I brought my thread back to just in front of the bar of the hook. The tag's a little bit longer than some tags. It's uh, seven or eight thread wraps and we're going to use small oval silver tinsel from Uni. I like the small tinsel over the medium tinsel. It tends to bind to the hook a little bit better and just seems a little flashier. When I put my oval tinsel on, when I go to put this on to start it, what I'll do is I'll come from the back side of the hook, <coughs> excuse me, come up underneath the thread to the front side of the hook, which is on my side. This allows me now to have the thread hold the tinsel in place. If I need to move it, slide it forward, slide it back. I can do so, make some adjustments, and it locks the tinsel in place for me so I can see where it is. I'm going to trim my tinsel right up to the return eye, right level with it, because we're going to start building our material up to that return eye and not have a step. This is a full floss body, so we want things to be as even as they possibly can. Nice and smooth thread wraps underneath. I'm bringing my thread wraps up now, touching turns, up to the point of my hook. That's going to give us our length for our tag. And in order to get the bobbin out of the way, I'm going to big sweeping turns forward, 
towards the front of the hook and allow me space to work with my tinsel and wrap my tinsel. So we're going to do touching turns. First wrap is going to be all the way around and not on the thread, it's on the hook itself. And the next continuous wraps will be touching turns in front of itself until you get in front of the point of the hook, just slightly in front. So we're actually going to do probably more like eight or nine turns, possibly ten turns. And you want those to keep tight to each other. And now pulling it down on a 90 degree angle, I'm just slightly in front of the point of the hook and that's exactly where we want to end our tag. We're going to bring our threads back and now as you can see the thread is at the exact same 90 degree angle as our tinsel. We're going to kind of come up underneath with one tight turn, one tight wrap and that'll hold again your tinsel in place and I have that tinsel just slightly on this side of the hook again in front of me. I'm going to do three more turns forward. One, two, three. And I'm going to bring the tinsel back 90 degrees and bring it right back to the end of the tag. What we've done now is we've kept any lumps or bumps underneath and off to the side of the hook for the floss body. And we've allowed ourselves now to use a silver tinsel for a ribbing. I'm just going to finish off and come forward. A little bit wider thread wraps. Again, we broke the thread. But don't panic. This is actually a good teaching tool. I've just allowed the thread to hang there. We're going to reset our bobbin and thread. There we go. I'm just going to slightly pull that forward. Lock my tag end in. Bring it towards the brake. Trim this off and trim off the brogue. Break one break broken piece. There we go. Now I'm going to continue my thread wraps forward, locking this ribbing in, this tinsel in I should say, right to the return eye. And bring it back. A little bit of open wraps to bring it back a little bit quicker and keep our body nice and even and bring it right back to the beginning of our tag. The next material I'm going to use is Uni Floss in Do Silver Dr. Blue. This is going to be our entire body and it's single strand by the way. You can buy flosses and two strands, four strands, three strands. I prefer the single strand. If I have to double up, I'll double up on the body. If, um, but generally I like my bodies to be relatively thin and consistent. And a single strand allows me to do that. I've done the same technique with the floss as I did with the oval tinsel. I brought the floss up underneath and held into place. I'm going to now trim it to the length, to the return eye, for the whole length of the body, just slightly over the body. And now I'm going to begin my wraps forward, touching turns. And I want to keep the floss in front of me on the return eye side. So every once in a while it'll want to curve up, and that's just from pressure. You'll learn to have more medium pressure as time goes on. And you just keep it there. You have medium pressure, it'll tend not to roll. If the pressure is a little bit off, it'll roll. You just want to keep it on the return side so we can get rid of that step on that return eye. And just take your time and wrap it forward. Don't have to be in a hurry. You want it as even as you can. And sometimes when I get to this point, 
you'll see that the floss begins to flare up. And this is where you can lose some of the floss um, to small fibers sticking out over your body, which will affect how your body looks. So what I'll do is I'll wet my finger, thumb, forefinger and thumb, and I'll just slightly wet that floss, and that'll keep it from flaring out as I get closer. Now I'm going to bring, continue the thread forward to about five or six mil back from the eye. We have several colors to wrap, so we want to leave a good distance from the eye. And this is where we'll bring up our body. And as you can see now, the step is pretty much gone from the return eye. And we're going to bring this up. Just going to pull on the floss to flatten it out slightly. Steady pressure to come around. First turn is going to be continuous right on top of itself, right beside the tag. And then we're going to slowly move our floss forward. Touching turns in front of itself, in front of itself. you can slightly overlap if you'd like. I'm just going to take our time and move forward. You just want to try and keep as even pressure as you can. There's actually a point when you're rotating your floss over that you'll see a flat spot. You want, with steady pressure, you can keep that flat spot and keep your wraps nice and even. If they slightly open up, you can always stop, back it up, and readjust your floss. At the same time, too, if there's little bits of points where it's not perfect, this is a, a fishing fly, not a display fly. And actually, I think in some cases, when you have a little bit off on the body, where it almost looks like extra ribbing in here, I think it gives a little bit more natural look. And I think it traps some air bubbles when you're swinging it and gives a little more movement to the body. So we brought our thread back now. We're going to lock the floss in place. And I'm going to run the floss 90 degrees underneath the hook. I'll begin now to wrap most of my material up underneath the hook so that we can keep a flat base here for when we're tying our, when we're wrapping our collars in and keep it even and keep everything locked in nice and tight. So we've trimmed it, locked it in with a few more wraps. Now we're going to bring our ribbing up. Most standard bodies on most flies call for four to five wraps or possibly six wraps on your ribbing. On this particular pattern, Mark LeBlanc and myself, we tend to have extra ribbing on there, a little more flash it gives it. Um, the ribbing will be a little bit tighter. I'm going to use a rotary portion of my vise to keep things nice and even. We're actually going to put on probably closer to eight to ten wraps of ribbing and give it a little bit more flash in there. end it. At the end of the body, I'm going to do one full turn to help lock that ribbing in. Again, another turn here. Two, three, four. Lock that ribbing underneath and trim it off. Now I'm just going to clean up this head portion. Put the thread base onto the portion that didn't have any from the beginning of the fly. So now we have a nice even body, nice and smooth. We have our tag in and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ribs. So again, you know, that eight to ten ribs is what you're looking for. Have a nice clean body. And now we're going to start our color wrap. This particular pattern has three color wraps. Marabou is going to be your first wrap right here. And I tend to use select marabou when I'm tying my marabou flies. Um, you don't get as much material in the bag, but you get a far better material. And you get that nice webby look, and we'll see that as we go. So your first color is a blue marabou. I've got it all here. And what I'm looking for on these particular marabou flies is I'm looking for this. We have these nice wavy tips, nice webby tips up top here, nice concave shape, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Some may not be so much. That's okay. We can use them in other flies or some smaller flies. 
um, but generally with the select all of them will look like this so you actually get sometimes a little more value out of it because you get pretty much if you got 12 feathers you get 12 flies so again this is our marabou it has a concave side to it as most fe feathers do um, and what we're looking for is this top wavy section so again you may be able to see it quite well you may not be able to but there's a very thin stem at the top and the stem, stem gradually goes to a much thicker stem this is the portion that you want is the thin portion up here so because it's a looks very easily goes from thin to thick I'm going to take my finger and thumb forefinger and thumb and hold it to desired amount of marabou that I'm going to be using I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just trim back and pull back the other barbels now it's important to note that whenever you're trimming back a stem like this you always want to pull to the bottom section of the stem pull backwards if you try to pull, pull forward it's not natural for those fibers so you want to pull backwards and it'll always come nice and clean and just hold the stem up here tight enough that it won't slip out of your hand we're going to trim this off and we'll put that aside we can use that for tailing and so forth on other flies now we're going to take our front portion the portion that we want to wrap for a collar so I'm going to again I'm going to talk about that concave side there's a shiny side and a concave side just like this the feather will tend the barbels will tend to have a natural progression to go backwards and that's the side that you want to come to here so that when we tie this in by the tips we're going to find a tip we're going to pull the fibers back so that we get the tip just like this and I'll put that concave side the rounded side to the hook I'm going to wrap it on three four turns I'm going to take that tip and wrap it back and then I'm going to do large spiral wraps forward to my eye now in a lot of cases people will trim this tip off I don't because I don't want the feather to slip I don't want it to come off and in fact because it's sitting up 90 degrees on the top it actually gives a little push to the marabou on the top and I like to have that little piece in there so now what we're going to do is you can use hackle pliers for this if you like I'm going to use the stem I've cleared off enough of the stem and a large portion of the stem that I can use as a handle we're going to fold the fibers back and come around we're going to wrap this collar and each turn is going to be one step in front of itself you're not going to wrap you're not wrapping the stem on top of itself you're doing it slightly in front of itself you're keeping it nice and even just like you did with the body and you're slightly pulling back on all the fibers so you get this nice webby look now the amount of turns and the amount that we put on here will be dependent on your personal preference and how well the feather is going on sometimes some are a little thicker than others some are a little thinner this is going on just perfect we'll be able to use that whole piece that I peeled off and you'll find that you'll get used to better proportions on your fly as time goes on and you tie it we're going to bring my thread back come up underneath with that stem and as you can see I'm going to pull that stem 90 degrees underneath again I find that when I keep the stems and so forth underneath especially these thicker ones it keeps a nice flat base for the next collar coming on I'm going to trim that to just about where the head is the eye of the hook and I'm going to bury that under slightly rotating and tucking it under and I'm going to come back here to the beginning now I'm just going to pull these out to make sure all the fibers are loose to where we want them if you had found a fiber that was locked in you wouldn't have to return it you can always take your bodkin and find any feathers that are locked in and just do one right here as you can see there's a bit of a pressure on the bodkin all I'm going to do is give a little push 
and pop that off. And that releases those fibers underneath and gives us great movement. And this is exactly what we're looking for right here. Nice and webby. Okay, the next color we're going to put on. This color is Barb Select Mallard Flank, or you can use teal. Um, I find that the Mallard Flank is a little more readily available, and it comes in dyed colors and that as well. This is natural. Um, it's nice, long, webby fibers. But what we're doing is we're doing multiple colors here. We're going to select the feather. So what's going on here is the reason why we're doing multiple colors and how this fly really gets to come to life in the water is the marabou is very soft fibers and has tons of movement. The mallard flank is a little bit stiffer fiber. We're going to put a little more color in here and lock this little bit stiffer fiber in. And what the stiffer fiber is going to do, instead of the marabou coming in and going wet and flattening right out, the stiffer color is going to allow the water to vortex around the fly and actually give it more movement and give it more bulk in the water. So our next one, we've taken our select mallard flank feather. We're going to find that fine tip again where it's a little bit thinner and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to peel everything back here. Just like that to give you a handle. Trim it off. Pull our fibers back till we get to our tip. Just like so. There we go. Again, it's concave this way and it has a shiny side. The shiny side is going to face you. The concave side is going to go up against the hook. turns, we're going to fold that little bit of tip back, lock that in, and then bring our thread forward. Now the locked in tip again is small, I'm not going to worry about trimming it off, and I want to keep that locked in there anyways, it's just going to help it. Now we're going to fold these fibers back, the stem on the mallard flank is much thicker than the stem on the marabou is, so we're going to use up a little more space in the front. And we're going to have to fold these fibers back to get them to splay the way we'd like them to. So we're going to keep rolling this forward, probably three or four turns of the mallard. Make sure we hold these fibers back, come up and around. And now we're going to lock that stem in underneath again. Up, underneath, come up, three or four turns. We've got that stem locked underneath. Come in here again, trim, lock that stem up underneath. And keep this front portion of the hook again, as I was saying, nice and flat for our collars to wrap and not slide forward. Now as you can see the mallard's holding down a little bit. We're going to come in with our trusty little toothbrush and we're going to separate those fibers out, the mallard fibers, and get that nice look. Once it's tied in, and these feathers are pretty durable, you can come in and, and play with them and pull them around to get the look that you want. And once this fly has a bit of a swim, you'll see that it'll be look a little bit nicer and not so perfect. So I'm just going to even up this front here again and we're going to come into our next collar. And our next collar is going to be my favorite again. Another great favorite is the pheasant rump. Um, pheasant rump is a great uh, spay hackle. Very fibrous, very flowing. Um, comes in a multitude of colors, has a great sheen to it. Um, the other thing that I like about it is that it makes a good substitute now for if you're tying flies like the Lady Caroline, that sort of thing on a smaller size. It's a great inexpensive substitute and um, 
most of the shops in your area and so forth carry it. It's very readily available and in generally good quality. So it's strung or you can buy the pheasant or you can buy the pheasant rump patch. So what we're going to do here now is look through my package and I want to find a nice long webby one here. There we go. It's in there strung. Pull that out. And you'll see that these have nice long webby individual barbels here. And again this stem too and I'll show you from that side. It goes very thin and very thick very quickly. So you can easily see where the thinnest part for wrapping the collar that you want is to the thickest part. So again I'm going to come in here and take my thumb and forefinger right at that point where the stem goes from thin to thick. I'm going to grab these excess pieces that I do not want or need and I'm going to pull them off straight down on both sides just like that. Drop the excess and I'm going to trim off this little piece back here and I've got a good handle for wrapping my collar. As you can see now from this side you can really see where it goes thin to thick so that'll be our discarded portion and you can really see how concave this feather is. Um, it's a great way to see it and shiny on this side and dull. So again we're going to pull these fibers down to find our tip. Nice thin tip right here. So shiny side out to me, concave side against the hook. I'm going to do two or three or four wraps down. Pull the tip back, come back again, and then just some big spiral wraps to get the get it out of your way. So again, what I like to do with these particular ones is on the mallard flank, I folded the fibers back and really controlled them more. What I want to do now is allow these fibers to splay out a little more, so I won't fold them back as much, just enough to to tease them into position that I want them to be. But I'm generally going to allow those fibers to just open up on their own and stay almost like spider legs, nice and wide and open. Just like that, but very little pulling back on them. I got my stem now again, 90 degrees, back my thread up, come up underneath, lock that stem in underneath again. Trim it off and you still got a nice thin stem underneath there that isn't going to create a lot of bulk. Again come forward and come back and there's our third and final collar. This will give it some nice webby motion. The pheasant rump tends to have a iridescent look to it so it gives the head some nice iridescence to it and again allows a little more of a vortex to come around the marabou and give it more movement and allow the fly to have a little more bulk when it's in the water. Our last bit now is going to be our wing. Our wing consists of a feather called the Lady Amherst. Um, this is dyed in chartreuse. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful pheasant tail to work with. Uh, available in about eight or ten different colors. Uh, the natural, very nice as well, um, and individual feathers if you can find them. The tail feathers, which are relatively easy, buy the entire entire tail feather. You'll get lots of uses usage out of it because you're just going to use individual fibers. So what we're going to do is I have my bodkin in my hand, and I'll try and set this up so that you can see it. These fibers are relatively thick, so we can separate them relatively easily. And all we want is five, six, maybe seven fibers to do our wing. So we're going to come in here and we've separated five, maybe six. You can even come in and separate literally an individual barbel just like that with relative ease with your bodkin. We're going to hold these and we're going to trim them right down to the stem. Trim them right off. I'll put that off to the side. So as you can see, this is a very small portion of feather compared to the entire tail. So you'll get multitudes of flies out of it. Now when we put our wing on, we literally just want to lay the wing flat, just like this. 
it'll have a bit of a natural curve. I'm going to come in on top. I've held it flat with the concave side facing down. I'm going to come in on top. I'm going to come with my thumb and forefinger here on top. I'm actually going to pinch them together. I'm going to come up with the pinch loop. Come down. Another turn. Another turn. Another turn. And there we have our wing right up on top. If you needed to adjust your wing, you can take this piece and your wing itself and the excess and move it around and pinch it around a little bit and get it to flow just like that. So now the wing is right on top. We've pinched our material on top. We're going to take our excess off just like so. And now we're going to create our head on top. And just to make sure that the wing stays in place, I'm going to hold everything here until I have all the tag ends and the tip ends of the Amherst locked into place. I'm going to build my head up. Come down and whip finish. Trim the thread. And there we have it. We'll come up with the head cement. Um, this is a product from Loom. It's a water-based head cement. Um, it's ultra thin, penetrates down through the thread and that really well. I always use it as a base coat. Works excellent, penetrates down through in, dries relatively quickly, and then I'll come in with a heavy lacquer black or whatever color that I need, but a heavier blacker lacquered style head cement to clean the head up. And there we have it, folks. That's the finished Amherst Bay, a great Marc LeBlanc pattern and can be tied in a multitude of colors. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a nice day.